you're an administrative assistant and you use Google Calendar, then you will want to check out these 10 tasks for Google Calendar. The first task is that of requesting access in viewing someone else's calendar. Now in Google Calendar, we're using Jane Examples account and we want to access Adam's account because Jane is the assistant. So if we go down to other calendars, you can click on the plus and then subscribe to calendar. And then you can go ahead and choose someone. So in this case, you could just go ahead and start typing. And here you go, Adam's calendar. We see he is the owner. And we already see some information on the sharing or on the permissions that Jane can only see free busy. So that is the default setting. Now, compared to your organization, there is a default setting. I know most organizations that I have given training sessions for, this is the default setting. So you can subscribe to anyone's calendar just the way I've demonstrated now, but it's most likely free busy. So what does that mean? Um, let's just go back to the settings. So what that means is, and here we see Adam's calendar. You see Adam, it's, um, this gray, he obviously has some meetings going on here. He has some events in his calendar, but Jane only sees free busy. So that probably is not enough if you're an administrative assistant. And that's why in such a case, you will have to ask the owner, let's say your manager, to change their settings. So now we're in Adam's account. Let's head over to settings and let's scroll down here to um, the sharing settings for Adam. And here you see, this is the default setting for our organization, Free Busy, but he needs to add a person specifically. In our case, this is Jane example, and he needs to give her more rights. Now in the drop down here, we see all of the separate rights that you can grant. For an assistant, you probably want to give the rights, make changes to events. You could totally delegate your calendar if you wanted to, so make changes and manage sharing, but that probably is a little bit too much. So in that case, Jane could go ahead and also share Adam's calendar with other people. You probably don't want your your assistant doing that for you. Instead, you want him or her creating events for you, managing your events. And if that is the case, then make changes to events is absolutely enough. Uh, you can say, go ahead and send. There you go. And now Jane has the right to not only see when Adam is free and busy, but also to create events in his name. I'm back in Jane's calendar and instantly we see that we see the details now of these events in Adam's calendar to make sure if you don't see that yet, refresh. And from now on, Jane has more access to Adam's calendar. Now, the way this worked was that I subscribed to Adam's calendar. And since in our organization, there was already a default sharing there, I was able to add his calendar. If Default sharing is turned off. So if you do not have the ability to subscribe to, let's say, your manager's calendar, when you try to subscribe, it will send out a request and the person will be able to answer. So, um, but I'm guessing that more likely there will be just a very minimum uh, level of sharing and then you will be able to subscribe, but you will have to ask your manager to give you more permissions on their calendar. The next task is creating an event on behalf of someone else. In Jane's calendar, let's say for next week here between 11 and 12, she has to schedule a meeting for Adam. So she simply adds a new event. I'm gonna do so by clicking in. And currently her default calendar, or so her own calendar is active, but she needs to choose Adam's calendar. So you see, she also has other calendar like team calendars. And in this case, she wants to choose Adam's calendar. There you go. And now uh, maybe give it a title, um, demo about product. Go ahead and invite the people. So let's say I'm gonna invite Chanel. 
and um, you can even have a look at the suggested times if you want to, whatever you need to do, um, the guest permissions if you want to change that. In our case, we're just going to add some XYZ description, maybe attach a document just to mimic uh, that, you know, let's say this here, select stock options, that sounds good. Now you can also go ahead and modify any of these settings if you need to and click on save, send that out. There you go. So now we visibly see that this is, or this was created on Adam's calendar. So I'm currently in Jane's calendar it with locked in with her account, but I chose Adam's calendar and that's why he is now the organizer and the invitation goes out in his name. The next task is that of creating an event in a different time zone. Here we have our event and have a look at this. You can click here on time zone and expands this view. Then again, this is clickable and it shows you that you could schedule this event in a different time zone. Let's say, uh, I don't know, plus four GMT. Just scroll ahead. There you go. I'm just going to choose one of these. Here you go. Like so, you could even have separate start and end dates. Okay. And I'm doing this with Adam's account again. So, okay. And there you go. Here, different time zone. So that's how we, how you would use that functionality. Now, if you're wondering, hmm, did that really work with the time zones? Let's have another look. So currently the meeting is being displayed at 8.30 in the morning until 8, uh, 9.30 in the morning. If you click on the event and open it up like in the edit event, then you see here it's actually saying it is scheduled to GMT plus four four, but it's being displayed in the calendar as GMT plus O2. So it has been scheduled to this time, 1030, but it displays at a different time in our calendar because that is set up to show GMT plus two, which means that something that is scheduled as 1030 in GMT plus four correctly is displayed as this time. So that did work. It might be a little bit confusing, but it did actually do um, what it was supposed to do. The next task is that of accepting or declining events on behalf of your manager. Here you have three options. One would be, let's say, the message that you receive if you have delegated access to your manager's account, Gmail account, and then you have two options within Google Calendar. And these are the two I'm going to show you right now. So one thing we see here, we have Adam's calendar currently displayed. This is a new invite. If you click on it, you clearly see that Adam has been invited and you could directly from here, let's say accept in our case, even say, yes, I will be there with the board in the meeting room. The second option I want to point out to is that of getting event notifications. This is something that you will have to set up. Click on settings like so then scroll down to your manager's calendar. Then under other notifications, you can define for what situations you want to be notified, like new events have been added or events have been changed, maybe even canceled events. So depending on what you need for information and here it's specified that you will receive email notifications. Um, so this absolutely makes sense for like new or changed events that you can go ahead and accept these invitations, but you do have to be aware of the following opting into these notifications may alert and be visible to the calendar's owner. But I'm guessing since, you know, you're the assistant, that's absolutely okay that the owner in this case, your manager is notified that you have subscribed or have turned on notifications for their calendar. So that should be absolutely okay. If you need any more notifications, then you can also go ahead and set this here. I'm going to leave it for new and changed events. Since we've set up notifications for new events, here's how it looks. So we see there's an invitation that has been sent to Adam and Keep in mind, here we are in Jane's Gmail. We can go ahead and accept this in Adam's name. 
The next task is adding a note to an invitation response. Now you can add notes to invites. So like in this case, we're going to add it now to an already existing invitation. This is something that Adam already replied to or Jane replied to in Adam's name. You can expand this view and then add a note. And by the way, even if you click on add a note in the email notification that you receive, you will be brought to the same place. I think it's much easier to just to add the note while you're in the calendar view. Uh, here you might want to add will be running late, something like that, and just click on send. So let's have another look at that. It was here at the board meeting. So we see this is the view for Adam's calendar. How does it look um, for someone else? Let's say for the person who scheduled the meeting. Let me just go ahead and refresh this over here. And let me drag this here onto our screen. So we see that Adam's comment that was added by James in his name is visible here whenever you click on the event in the calendar and also a notification was sent out to the organizer of this event with this note that was created. Next task is that of adding roll clocks. That is something we do in the settings. This might be useful if your manager travels a lot or just simply has meeting with people in different time zones. So we can click on show world clock and add our different time zones. So this is the default one. Let's just go ahead randomly and choose some others like here you go, uh, Pacific time and maybe something more to the east like so. Okay, now let's go back to our calendar to see what for an effect this has. There you go. And what I think is really nicely done, have a look what happens when I click into the calendar. Let me just go ahead and move that. So it would be 12 our time and it also shows you what time that would be in the other time zones, which is super valuable when you're scheduling event with people in, uh, in different time zones. Next up is emailing all guests. That is also very easily done. Click on the event, then on this envelope icon, and then send out whatever message you want to automatically all of the guests will be added here. But please note that when you do that, you as the assistant will be the sender of this email. So in this case, you would have to write it. Um, Adam wants to let you know that you will have to bring X, Y, Z to the demo or whatever. So it won't be actually sent out in Adam's name, but instead in Jane's name. The next task is how to notify guests of a change to an event. Let's say here the demo about product, there's a change somehow. So we edit the event. Let's say that time changes. It's now at 1115. We click on save and that prompts us to add a message. Um, the event has changed and so on and so forth and sent that out to all of the guests and automatically they will receive those changes. Let me just go ahead and quickly grab that over here so that we see that. There you go. So this is a message that the guests have received. And we see that something has changed. And you also, here you go, the event has changed. You also notice in this case, it is also again sent out in Jane's name. So we had no option of saying send it out in Adam's name. So just be mindful of that whenever you write your message for changed events. Next, we're going to look at how you can transfer ownership of an event to another person. We have here an event where Jane has invited Adam and Chanel, but she's currently the organizer. What about if Jane says, you know, I might be at the meeting, I might not be, but in any case, Adam needs full control, let's say of breakout rooms, of polls and Google Meet, all of that stuff. So you, you want to make your manager to the manager of a specific um, Google Meet call. In that case, you could do the following options and then say change owner, and then you choose who you want to make owner and they will then receive a notification. They click on the link and then they will be the new owner of this event. Let's see how we can find an event. 
For this, we're going to use the search. So we're going to click here on this icon. Let's say we're looking for an event that somehow has the name demo. And we see that it looks through not only our calendar, so in this case, Jane's calendar, but also Adam's calendar. We can recognize that by the gray dot that we see. So here, let's say we're looking for this to demo about product. And we see that as long as we're subscribed to the calendar and also currently have it displayed, we can also search through the other calendar. If you like the video, then please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And while you're here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our video tutorials about Google Workspace.